Hey guys, hope you're all doing good and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we will learn about the traction control system in automobiles. Imagine a situation where you're driving a car on a slippery road. When you try to accelerate your car in this slippery condition, the wheels slip. If the wheels spin without any grip, the vehicle will not get accelerated even though you apply more throttle and it may lead to an uncontrollable situation. To avoid this, modern vehicles are equipped with a system called the traction control system. Traction control is a safety feature which prevents the loss of traction of wheels. This is done by ensuring that all four wheels of the vehicle have sufficient traction under slippery conditions. We've had a brief discussion on how the traction control is utilized while discussing differential gears. If you want to watch the video, the link is in the description. The primitive form of the modern traction control system was the limited slip differential, which has been in use since the 1960s. But this differential setup cannot eliminate slip completely. This eventually created a need for a more sophisticated system. The Buick car company was the first to introduce a computer system to detect wheel slips and modulate engine power in 1971. Following this, a traction monitoring system was introduced by Cadillac in 1979. When it comes to working, the operation of the traction control system is more or less similar to the working of the anti-lock braking system. For better understanding of how ABS works, you can watch our video on it. It is given in the description. The traction control system shares the wheel speed sensors, the electronic control unit, and the hydraulic control unit with the ABS. The TCS is integrated into the ABS. So they are considered as a single unit in modern vehicles. Now, how does this traction control work? Well, the wheel speed sensors detect the speed of the wheels and send the signals to the ECU. Whenever a slip is detected, that is when one wheel spins faster than the others, the ECU takes over the hydraulic control unit. It then applies the brake to the wheel that slips in quick succession. This in turn reduces the speed of the slipping wheel and traction is made available. In some vehicles, the TCS can control the wheel spin by reducing the engine power. This can be done either by retarding the ignition timing to cylinders, reducing the fuel supply to the cylinders, or by closing the throttle. When this is done, the driver may sense a pulsating vibration on the gas pedal. The traction control system also helps in better cornering of the vehicle. When the driver applies more throttle while cornering, the wheels may slide. TCS prevents this by limiting the power to the wheels. The traction control system will get activated when the acceleration of the wheels mismatches with the acceleration of the vehicle. This happens mostly during slippery conditions. But this system also has its own disadvantage. To discuss this, let us take a case. Imagine a car which is at a standstill condition on a snowy surface. Now, when you start the car, all the wheels will slip. As all the wheels are slipping, the TCS functions by reducing the engine power. This makes it harder to move the vehicle and hence it is not desirable. It is not better to use TCS in these conditions and the vehicles have an option for turning off the TCS. In some vehicles, the TCS cannot be deactivated completely, but it may allow an increase in wheel spin during such conditions. But in the end, it all depends on the driving style of the driver behind the steering wheel. The TCS can either be kept on or off, depending on the weather, the quality of the road, and the type of tires. So guys, I think you're clear about how the TCS system works now. Wait for more interesting videos in the upcoming days. Until then, Bye.